Hi, I'm Zachary Fanel. Thank you very much for joining me for the final edition of your Timberland Weather Outlook. Right now, we're looking towards the summer, getting to the very, very end of the school year. So we're going to take a brief overview of what we can see for much of the rest of June, July, and into August before we get back into school next September. We're going to start in the very short range for us. First and foremost, these next couple of days, we're expecting a pretty significant warm-up throughout the day. As we get into today's, these are forecasted from the National um, Weather Service. So we don't have the current highs, but this is what we were expecting as, as I record this right now. We're not at the high temperature yet, expecting somewhere in the mid to upper 70s for much of New England down in towards the south, expecting those 80 degree temperatures. But looking across the Midwest, it's when we can start to see a heat wave that will eventually hit us. Looking across these areas in towards the central part of the Great Plains, we're ignoring way out west. They are dealing with some extreme heat in towards Fresno, San Francisco, 100, 105 degrees. But in through here, just some 80 degree temperatures. This is tomorrow's um, expected daytime highs. You see these really building in 90s, maybe even some hundreds in towards Kansas, and that is going to slowly move towards our area. Again, tomorrow's forecasted high, it hasn't reached us yet yet just in towards the upper 70s but you begin to see it move into New England as we get towards day three so count about that's gonna be Thursday now you can see our area looking towards those 80 maybe some maybe even 85 degree temperatures again in towards Kansas in the Central Plains still dealing with those ridiculously hot temperatures and much of the East Coast expecting some thunderstorms to blow up with these extreme daytime highs those will be expected a lot more on Friday for us keep a lookout they might be strong at times it's hard to say how isolated they will be now getting away from the very right now centric idea of a forecast let's look at the climate prediction center so these um, are scientists who look at a very broad area of time and instead of saying this is what the temperature is going to be they do it in terms of the averages so for us they are expecting a above average um, year for us in terms of temperature so the percent chance that we get a warm summer is pretty high you can see in those oranges kind of dark oranges that's where they're expecting a pretty solid chance that we're going to be above average in terms of temperature this year across much of the central part of the country a little bit towards the east it's a little bit of a lesser chance probably closer to average but out on the west coast we are really expecting a scorcher this summer again the darker red doesn't necessarily mean it'll be hotter it just means that there will be a better chance that it will be warmer than average so again these areas expecting a pretty strong chance that it will be warm and it will be a very hot summer along with that they do a precipitation outlook and this area across again not necessarily levels of below or above average but just the chances that it will be below or above average in terms of how much rain or snow falls throughout the season so obviously you're not expecting a whole lot of snow through summer the rainfall across the west coast below average for the east coast luckily behind me I'm gonna pop over really quick you can see some above average rainfall expected for us no drought expected for the east coast of the United States for the west coast it's a different story this is a drought monitor we're gonna take a look at this very quickly those brown areas you can see down into is this um, southwestern part of the country and the Cascadians in the northwest these are areas where the drought already exists so if you have in the brown that is where drought already exists and is expected to continue over the summer anywhere in yellow drought does not exist right now we're expecting it to develop especially with those hot and dry temperatures across much of the west coast so you can see they got a bit of a break these last couple years the drought began to wear away at um, excuse me the rain began to wear away at the drought However, this summer looks like it'll probably be a pretty hot and dry one. So much of the West Coast, look out for continued developing drought across that area. I mentioned earlier, the East Coast is a different story. We're expecting still warm, but some above average precipitation along the coast. That is due to an above average hurricane season. Not entirely because of the hurricanes, but above average for sure. This is what uh, we're expecting between the NOAA, that is our National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, it's a mouthful, they do much of the climate research here in the United States. So they went with a forecast 
of the hurricane season that's upcoming along with Colorado State University. These two put together, they you kind of average out their forecasts. That's what much of the top scientists in the country say we will be having for a hurricane season. This year, we're expecting anywhere in the range of about 20 to 25 tropical storms, somewhere between 8 and 13 hurricanes and around five major hurricanes. For some comparison, we usually only get about 14 tropical storms per season, so that's nearly 150% the amount of tropical storms. Never mind the amount of hurricanes, we usually only get maybe a little bit over five, and in terms of major hurricanes, usually only about three. So in some of these cases, we will be seeing maybe double the amount of hurricanes, major hurricanes and tropical storms that we usually see. And again, I'm gonna move over to this side so you can see really quickly. National Oceanographic Atmospherics Administration, an 85% chance this season is above average in terms of that hurricane season. So. Let's break it down very quickly why that's happening. The Atlantic is extremely hot. That's our main driving factor for this hurricane season. Anywhere where you see these orange temperatures, um, down especially in towards this area, these are your 80 degree temperatures. In order to have a hurricane really form, and especially it, for it to strengthen, you need 80 degree temperatures. Anywhere in yellow, 70 degrees, that's your water temperature. And in towards Florida, if you see those darker oranges starting to get towards reds, the water temperature already, just into June now, the water temperature has already hit 90 degrees. That's rocket fuel for hurricanes essentially across much of the Gulf Coast. That's why we're especially concerned this hurricane season. Any storms that do develop have all the fuel that they will need in order to become very strong. And it's very difficult to see from this picture, but all the way down in that corner over there, you can see it cools off a significant bit off of the South American coast. That is a temperature pattern we call the El Nino or La Nina. So anytime it's above average, the water temperature is above average in that area, typically the hurricane season is significantly weaker for us. End up, we end up getting a, a stronger amount of wind shear which destroys any hurricane. So whether or not they have warm temperatures, well, they're not going to be able to form in the first place. But it's cooling off rapidly, meaning that we're heading into a La Nina, which means much more hurricanes are expected to form and they have a whole lot more power behind them. Never mind when we have this much Atlantic heat. This is the hottest Atlantic hurricane season we've seen up to this point in terms of water temperature. So it's something to look out for, for sure. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Zachary Fonnell. I'd like to extend a word of thank you to everyone who has helped make this program possible this year. Mr. Zanello, Dr. Campbell, and all the admin staff who have helped to make this ELO possible. Thank you very much, and especially thank you to everyone who's watching now and anyone who has watched along any of the forecasts. This has been a dream come true for me, and I hope to continue it into next year. So I'm Zachary Farnell signing off for the 2024 into 2023 into 2024 school year. Hope to see you next fall, hopefully next September. Thank you very much. I'm Zachary Farnell.